People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning in each and every time. You lot know I always appreciate it. Now, Arsenal's under 23s drew 3 3 against Manchester United. Obviously, the first team lost 1 0 against Man City. And, you know, our under 18s got demolished, got outclassed, got battered, got destroyed, got just defeated in every department. They lost 5 0 against Brighton. Congratulations to Brighton. They further confirmed why they have a great academy. You know, you see in the first team, you see Connolly and Ben White. Obviously, White had a loan spell. You know, they've got Ted Jenks. You know, they've got a couple players in and around the first team um, or, are, or are chomping at the bit. And we know they've got a good academy. You know, at under 18s level, um, what, what's, what's my man's name? Um, what's my man's name? The left back, man. He, he, he impressed me. Let me find it, people. I'm actually going to find it. Zach, Zach Stooge. Um, very good, very good player, very good player, very good fullback. They've also got Ed Turns, you all know about. They've got Toby Collier, who's a decent player, he's played for England at under 16s level, could be under 17s. I'm sure there was a game he played against America a couple of years back. Um, they've also obviously got Todd Miller, Todd Miller, not Miller, Todd Miller. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the winger they, they sourced from Colchester. Very good player, played well against us last season at this level. Brighton have a good academy, and if I haven't listed the, the name, you know, I can't be everywhere, I'm not no youth expert, but they've got a good academy, they've got a fantastic ethos for recruiting players, fantastic coaching staff, and a fantastic bunch of players, and you saw it, you know, they were forward thinking, they were, you know, they were taking two touches and whatnot, the mentality was there, they exploited Arsenal, you know, it was great. From an Arsenal perspective, mentally, you know, these under-18s will learn a lesson. You have to be prepared for every game. You know, you have to do a bit more. You have to be able to manage out a game. You're going to learn a lot. And this is the harsh realities of becoming a professional footballer, really, really and truly. Getting put to the sword like this. Forgive me if I'm wrong, it was Charlie Paterno's 17th birthday, you know. He, how, how unfortunate. He should be thinking about doing driving lessons and them things there when you turn 17. And obviously winning and getting a goal. So it's been a, it's been a poor birthday for him, unfortunately but there'll be many positive ones and that's a man who I believe is going to have a future at Arsenal within the first team setup. so it is, it is what it is man 1-0 if I can remember correctly Levy Lang conceded it into his own net people somewhat sliced it that was, that was poor and he needs to improve if he's going to have a future at Arsenal I haven't been too impressed with his performances at under 18s level people shortly after that you know our, our defense was at sixes and sevens we've conceded a dumb penalty and it and and just before half time they did the rest and made it and made it 2 nil. you know it was quite it was it was appalling from us and even the way we conceded those two goals to make it to put us three down you know the, the first one with Levy Yang and then instant retaliation literally on the I'd say around the stroke of half time, the 40th minute mark, they conceded two quick, we conceded, sorry, two quick fire goals with Miller and I believe Moran, their striker, I can't pronounce his name, um, you know, um, we were quite poor. If it wasn't Moran, it was Pepo or whatever his name is, Cameron something, I believe the, 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 the what's the thing called you get? The match sheet said so. Either way, they can they they took the the lead early on within the first twenty odd minutes, and then they can we conceded two shortly before half time to make it three nil. We shot ourselves in the foot, and really it was hard to really look at that game because there isn't much I can say from a tactical perspective. You know where. We, we're having a lot of possession, we're knocking the ball around. You know, Amari's knocking it around, Morrow's trying, but we're just being eaten. You know. I can't even explain it. Brighton are onto our first touches, you know. They're marking us out of the game. They're, str they're moving stronger than us. They just wanted it a bit more and it reflects. And, you know, we weren't at it mentally. We are conceding some joke goals. I think our defence, you know, the, the centre-halves are being split. They're too wide, you know, people. We're looking like a bunch of individuals. We're not looking like a collective unit, you know. And for me, positioning is everything. For these young players, you know, a lot of them are only 16, so they have to learn it. Positioning, you know. Especially the back line, the positioning was all over the place. So it's no it's no surprise as to why they scored. Todd Miller's goal, for example, you know, the ball came across, sliced us completely open down to the right hand side next to well, in the box but to the right hand side, and he smashed it. But that tells me what? We're not following runners, we're not cutting out the first ball and positioning, we're out of play. Credit to to Brighton, like I said, they're doing everything their managers probably told them to do. We can't say the same from an Arsenal perspective. You might even be lucky to say it's only 3-0 at half-time, even though that's not really a lucky thing to say, people. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, apologies, people, I find my other, other statistics, people, really. Um, they've, put us, they've, they've put us to the sword, people. In the second half, they, could, they, they, what's it? they scored again around the 60th minute mark to make it 5-0. And also, obviously, they got a penalty 
towards the end of the game, you know. For our defenders, especially our centre-halves, because a lot of the times watching them at this level, when the ball's put in behind, they're not aware of where their centre-half is, you know. They're just stuck where the ball is and they're getting caught and that's why they're making these fouls or being out of position. I don't know if that's what they're working on in training, but if they're not, I'd implore these young defenders to work on that really and truly, you know. Were we missing Alex Kirk because obviously he was playing for the under-23s? I'm not too sure. But it was a poor day at the office, as it should be if you lose 5-0. Like I said, credit to Brighton. Man to a man, they were, in, they were impressive. They were great. You know, difficult picking a man of the match, um, really. I think their left-back was, was really impressive. I think Collier was impressive. And I think Todd Miller was impressive as well, in particular. Um, Ed Turns was good as well. They had a number of good players out there. So it's, it's always a good thing, I guess, for a manager when you can't pick a man of the match in a good way. For Arsenal... We need to go to the drawing board, people, because, you know, there's not much more we can we can say or do on that front. We just need to go back to the drawing board. If I look at the table, people, at under-18s level, in the South Division where we are, we sit eighth. You know, we've played five, we've won two games, we've suffered defeat three times, and we've got a minus four goal difference, you know, so we need to improve. And I know it's not really relevant, but our under-23s, you know, relegation could be a very... Poss big possibility really people you look at the division as expected Chelsea are first they've only lost one winning four and playing five you've got Brighton up there another strong team Spurs have started the, the, the season strongly and finished and are third and you've got Dar you've got Blackpool fourth you've got Derby fifth you've got Everton sixth you know these are the teams you expect to be up there really I'd even say Everton are underperforming personally um, and then the bottom three, you've got Man United, Arsenal and West Ham and it's been atrocious at under-23s level. Obviously there's been a lot of loans but there's also been a lot of people coming in so it's a transitional phase. It is going to be hard teething problems and whatnot. And obviously whether we get relegated or not, you know, I don't want to see Arsenal relegated of course but the benefit of the the benefit of 23s is obviously to give people experience to develop people not to have a competitive team per se and win a league title at that that level it's not relevant you know Tyrese Medley Tutu Ben Shave Ballard Clark you know Oli Yinka Bowler, all of these guys could have been pre prevented from going out on loan and said, no, you're staying, you're being part of the 23s. I don't know if we'd win the league, but we'd have a dramatically competitive side when you consider we've still got Balogun and whatnot, people. But what benefit is that going to solve anybody in the grand scheme of things? It's not going to help anybody. So it's, it's, it's been a tough start to the season. We knew that we knew at under 18s level there was a we had, we're going to be relying on a lot of first year scholars, young 16 year olds, and turning freshly to 17 year olds, and we're going to learn these harsh lessons. And we knew at 23s there's going to be transition. So it's going to be a difficult season, I reckon, for Arsenal. But in relation to Arsenal versus Brighton, people, Brighton five, Arsenal nil. If I said Arsenal five, Brighton nil at the start, I apologise. You know, my head's lost, my head's gone, as I would be. As the as Arsenal under 18s players would be, because Brighton put them to the sword. People, thank you for watching. It means the world. But on that note, I'm gonna get out of here. DG, I'm out.